Professor Greg Foley is here now and he's from the School of Biotechnology. Hi, Greg. Hi, sorry about that. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> It's okay. And just for any of the um, our visitors online, just to say that this is all being recorded. And if you did miss the beginning of the engineering talk, for example, you know, you can see it again. I'll be sending out the recording to everybody who registered. Um, so you won't miss anything. You can go back on it. Um, so Greg is going to talk about bioprocessing. And this is one of our new specialisms. And you can enter through the Biological Sciences General Entry Program, DC180. And then from second year, you can um, have the option to take up bioprocessing. So um, Greg, I'll hand it over to yourself and you can talk about all things bioprocessing. I can indeed. Thanks, Colette. I'm actually going to talk about two, two programs because they're so related. Um, for many years, we've had a, a BSc in, in biotechnology and it's been a hugely successful degree. Um, in fact, I keep in contact with our graduates a lot and only the last few weeks, I, I talked with one graduate who's a global vice president for um, manufacturing science in Amgen, a huge pharmaceutical company, and then another graduate who did her PhD in Cambridge is an, and is also um, a manager of, of biotech in a company called Palantir. So that degree program has been massively successful and it's running since the 1980s. But because of we've been looking closely at the job market, I suppose, and DCU is always prided ourselves on the fact that we have a high, high employment rates and we thought there was space for another degree program that was similar to the BSc in, in biotech but also slightly different um, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a second um, because you know one of the things about the whole bio area of, of manufacturing is that it requires graduates with a, a particular set of skills don't want to sound like Liam Neeson now, but there are certain skills you need to work in, in the biopharma industry or even in food industries that are not typical typical set of skills that you would have in all sorts of other in industries. You have to be to work in these areas, you have to be quite adaptable and quite flexible. So hopefully I'll, I'll make that clear as we go along. I'm, I'm not going to give you an actual lecture like I would give to our students. What I'm really going to do is try to, well, I, it's kind of what I would do to our students when I first meet them in second year. And I go to kind of give, it, it's a thing that I, I give to kind of motivate students as to why they're going to study the stuff that I teach, which is, is a little bit from left field if, if you come across this um, unprepared. So I'll, I'll start the share, um, hopefully there'll be no hitches. And you, Colette, you might tell me if this is all working. Uh, it is indeed. Uh, if you want to put it on presenter mode. Yeah, great. That's it. Perfect. OK, so I'm going to talk about the two courses, bioprocessing and, and biotechnology. And I know when students at, are, at, you know, when you're at school, you look at those two words and you see bio and you immediately think this is a biology degree. And to some extent, they are. I mean, the, the biotech degree is is has a lot of biology. And as I said, the graduates of it have gone on to do great things as biological scientists. Um, as I mentioned early, um, earlier, we've had a couple of people do PhDs in pure biology in Cambridge. And like, you can't do better than that. And we have had people who've published fantastic science over the years in biology. But, but within the bioprocessing and the biotech degree, there's a little bit more than just biology. So, in terms of positioning where the BSc in biotech is and the BSc in bioprocessing are, um, they're kind of on a spectrum, if you like, between biology over there on the left, and we have a pure biology degree program in DCU called the BSc in genetics and cell biology. Very popular degree. We've been running it for about 15 years. Our BSc in biotechnology now is somewhere between biology and bioprocess engineering. And what is bioprocess engineering? Well, bioprocess engineering is a discipline that evolved from chemical engineering. And, and chemical engineering itself only really occurred in, the, I suppose, the 1920s, 1930s. And it's chemical engineering is all about the design, the operation, the optimization, the control, the environmental aspects of chemical processes, where they're done at a commercial scale. Um, but around the 1980s, and this was around the time we developed the BSc in biotechnology, it became clear that 
the future of manufacturing was no longer going to be really based on on chemical on chemis, chemicals, you know, fine chemical processing, um, but more on biology. And DCU was ahead of the game in the sense that we developed the BSc in biotechnology to produce graduates who would be able to work in manufacturing environments where there was a lot of biology involved. But to be able to cope with the, the large scale or commercial scale aspect of, of these new um, manufacturing processes, they would need some training in what we nowadays call bioprocess engineering. Um, and I'll explain a little bit later what that is. So the word engineering often kind of throws up fears of, of maths and, and, you know, everybody's an engineer is a kind of a nerd. I'm, I'm a chemical engineer myself, and I, but I've worked with biologists all my life. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of a bioprocess engineer now, but it's, it's, one of, it's been one of the most enjoyable things actually to work with people from a very different discipline, which I've learned so much biology from just working with biologists. It's, it's, it's been great. But, but anyway, the, the two BS, the two degree programs, the BSc in biotechnology and the BSc in bioprocessing are somewhere on the spectrum between biology and pure bioprocess engineering. The pure bioprocess engineering the engineer knows a lot of engineering, but honestly, they don't know enough biology. So what we wanted to create was a graduate who knows a lot of biology, but knows the key aspects of bioprocess engineering to make them able to function in a, a biopharma or a food processing or even a brewing environment. So the, the BSc in biotechnology was developed in the 80s, fantastically successful. But as I said, we, you know, looking at you know, various analyses that governments and people like IBAC have been doing, we felt that there was a need for a new degree program that shifted things slightly towards engineering. Now, I have a little kink here in my line here to show two things. One, that a lot of the shift is not really towards engineering per se. It's about a shift towards modules where we, within the module, we try to integrate biology and bioprocess engineering. And the other thing about these modules is that, and this degree program itself, is that they're part of what we call DCU Futures. And DCU Futures has a number of aims. And I'll, I'll click onto the next slide. First of all, as part of, of the DCU Futures program, we want to really up our game in terms of cooperating with industry. As I said, DCU has always taken pride in the fact that our graduates are very employable. And if you want to ensure that your graduates stay employable, then you have to work with industry. So on a lot of the new modules I'm working on now, that, that's my my day to day job. A lot of it is developing this bioprocessing degree. One of the key things we're trying to do is to get industry in and cooperate with us. And we're not just talking about them coming in to give it the odd lecture to. We want them to really design, um, run, and assess the modules with us. Uh, and that's been a very interesting project for me in the last year because it, it's interesting that our graduates, in particular, all the alumni of DCU, are incredibly keen to help out. So it's just a question of meeting both our needs the needs for us to make our course very applicable to industry and also the people I'm talking to obviously have a lot of time commitments and uh, there's only so much you can ask of them but it, it's a really important aspect of, of our new bioprocessing degree that it really is in tune with what industry actually wants. Um, the other, some of the other aspects of these new futures programs and to be honest a lot of DCU programs in the future are going to take on board some of these futures as aspects. You know we're going to have we have a specific target for the number of modules we'll have online and you know if I said this two years ago everybody would be oh my god online modules but after COVID we're all saying what's the big deal more we want more online modules. Um, that's the feeling I get from talking to students. So, so that's no big deal. One of the big things you get, you hear when you talk to people in industry, as and as only yesterday I was at a seminar in the School of Biotechnology, that all graduates have to be really good with in terms of their digital skills, in other words, using com computer and, and software packages, and to be able to handle data. 
because you know everything now boils down to data and i had a really interesting conversation um with the chap who's the the global vice president for uh, manufacturing science and one of the big problems people or companies have say in in vaccine manufacture is that you know one month they get huge yields of vaccine churning out vaccine and the next month they get hardly any and they're often baffled by this and and what companies are doing now is that they're measuring more and more things but in this in the process they're generating huge amounts of data so more and more graduates and, and people working in these companies need good digital and, and data skills um, it's the one thing that I hear constantly from from companies you know so you know if you think I'm a biologist and I don't need to worry about things like big amounts of data that's not the case anymore and in fact you know, key areas of biology like genomics and proteomics and um, all the omics, I suppose, are data analysis is and even coding and things like that is hugely important now. The fourth thing then was is this focus on what we call transversal skills. And this is something that, again, we think is really important in terms of making you employable. In other words, that you don't just learn off a load of content when you're doing your degree, but you actually develop certain skills and, and one of the there are certain skills that employers really talk about a lot and, and obviously data skills is one but another one would be just general communication skills you know so our students and particularly on the futures programs will will give a lot of oral presentations but they'll also do other things like make videos and, and all kinds of things um, a, a skill that comes across again and again from companies is that you do need to be able to work in teams. You know, you're not, a lot of what you do in school, you're kind of just, you go into school, but then your, your study is, is very individual. But, um, you know, the reality is, is the, the workplace is based on teamwork. Um, and so this is one of the things we're going to stress in, in the, the new programs, the bioprocessing. But again, that will begin to filter down to the other degrees as well, that a lot of the modules will involve teamwork. Now that that might seem attractive to somebody, but also to some people, but also quite challenging. And I have to say myself, I'm not a natural uh, team player in the sense that I like to have a bit of quiet and work through a problem myself. But it, you know, nowadays you you can't just say that. You have to be able to work in teams. So so that's one of the skills we're going to incorporate into the, the futures uh, programs. And you'll be delighted to hear that in, in, in bioprocessing, at least for the foreseeable future, there'll be far less emphasis on exams um, because of the nature of some of the modules we're developing. And a lot of them are this type of thing that we call challenge-based learning. So it's, and I'll give you an example of one in a minute. And challenge-based learning is a bit like project-based learning. So instead of attending lectures, which is still the kind of mainstay of, of university learning, you, you go into a module where, you, where you, you set up in groups and you tackle some sort of challenge. Um, and that might be, but you're supported, obviously, you're not just asked to go into a room and, and solve a problem that you, you know nothing about. It's, um, so, but it, it's, much, it's a much more active form of learning. And again, it suits. One of the things we really believe in, in, in the Futures program and in DCU generally is that it's unfair to place too much emphasis on exams because exams don't suit everybody so our solution to that is is to assess people in as many ways as possible so that over the course of, of four years every no one loses out so if, if you're good at presenting orally then you get the benefit of that if you're good at working in teams then you get the benefit and um, obviously if you're good at, at exams you get the benefit um, you know so I think there's there's no kind of magic bullet for assessment, but I think if, if you spread the assessment out over, over various methods, then it, it turns out to be the best approach, really, because you're you're testing all sorts of knowledge and skills, but it's also being being the first. Um, and then we have we're going to have a number of hackathons. The hackathon is usually the culmination of, of the challenge based learning type of module. So that, that's the, the futures programs. Um, um, but, you know, 
I, long term, as I said, I think higher education is moving towards more online learning, less emphasis on lectures, less em emphasis on, on exams. But I think our, our futures programs are a little bit ahead of the game at, at the moment. So as I said, I, I'm a chemical engineer. So, so what do I teach? And, you know, as I said, when you look at programs like bioprocessing or, or biotechnology, you, you think in terms of the bio. Um, and of course the bio is, is extremely important and the developments of biology in the last 20 years have been astonishing. If you think of gene editing, the development in immunology and vaccines and uh, monoclonal antibody drugs for cancer, like biology is, is hugely important within biotech and in, in bioprocessing. Um, but there is another angle to it. And if you look at the subjects I teach, these are all the, the lecture modules I gave. I also teach labs. And if you look at them, the, the number there tells you what year the, the student is in. So I teach fluid flow in year two. And you're wondering, what the hell is fluid flow doing in a, in a biotech program? And the same, I teach heat and mass transfer. And so that's about how heat is transferred and also how mass is transferred. And in biotech or bioprocessing, the mass usually refers to oxygen within things we, that are called bioreactors. So we'll, we'll talk about them again. I give lectures in membrane separation processes and membrane separations are one of the key um, what are called downstream processes of, of the pharma industry and also hugely important in, in food industries as well. So they include things like ultrafiltration, diafiltration, hemodialysis would be a good example of, of a membrane separation process. And I also teach bioreaction engineering, which has to do, to do with what's called upstream processing, which is where the drug you're making or whatever is actually manufactured. Um, and at the moment, I'm, I'm developing two new modules for the futures program. And they're both going to be taken by the bioprocessing students only. That's computation for bioprocess engineers. And that's really just to build up your, your basic computation skills using Excel in the main. It's, it's nothing too, too hectic, really. But it's, you know, if, if out in industry nowadays, as I said, it's really important to be numerate. In other words, to be good with numbers and to be able to cope with, with data. And one of the, the main packages nowadays for handling data is Microsoft Excel. So we give you lots of training in that. And then the second one is module I'm, I'm developing is uh, this one, contemporary issues in the manufacture of biological products. And this is a typical challenge-based learning. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to provide students with a bunch of online resources, okay? So they might involve publications about vaccine production, about uh, food production, about, about literally anything uh, related to, to the production of, of biological products. So the students can build up their knowledge using these resources that are provided online. And then we'll go into a room and you'll, as a, as a group of four, perhaps, yeah, it'll be four people, you decide on a challenge or some aspect of the manufacture of biological products um, that you want to address or some problem in the manufacture of biological problem, products that you want to address. So I remember at one stage last year during COVID, there were people arguing that um, the Irish government should set up our own vaccine manufacturing capability. So that, that could be a good thing to discuss. I mean, what are the the pros and cons of doing that? Do we have the expertise? Um, are the lag times too, too long? In other words, to go from concept to actually producing vaccines. You know, so it's, so it's a different type of module where you're, you're in a room working together, trying to address a, a real problem. And another example would be the whole issue of, of vaccine um, skepticism. You know, why are people so afraid of vaccines when they're, they're not afraid of cancer drugs, you know, or, or high blood pressure drugs? You know, vaccines seem to stir up an awful lot of um, uh, controversy. And why is that? I mean, so there, you know, you could bring in, you know, when we're running this module, we, we might bring in one of the psychologists from, from across the faculty to talk about some of the psychological issues of, of 
um, of vaccine hesitancy. Um, so these modules I teach, they're not biology. So to, to explain to the students in kind of day one, when I opened up with, with fluid flow, I tried to put the fluid flow and, and the mass transfer and all that kind of stuff in context. Um, and, and trying to justify why this stuff has been taught within a biology program, but it's not a pure biology program. Um, and I suppose at the heart of this is that biotech and bioprocessing are interdisciplinary. If you remember my diagram there, where these two programs are, are somewhere in between pure biology um, and, and bioprocess engineering. So, they're inherently interdisciplinary. You, you can't really talk about bioprocessing without recognizing it as an engineering aspect and a, a biology aspect. Um, and where the engineering becomes important is when you get to a, a commercial scale. You know, biology is, is what we call scale independent. It, the biology isn't changed if you are working in one liter as compared to 10,000 liters. You know, the, the biology is the biology. But you might do a whole set of lovely experiments at one liter and find you're getting fantastic product um, production. And then you go to 10,000 liters and you find you're getting hardly any. Um, and that whole area of of translating what works at a lab scale to what will work at a commercial scale is where the engineering comes in. So, you know, if you're the type of person who likes biology, but wants to see a real impact of, of your biology knowledge, then working in this kind of environment where you combine your, your biology knowledge with your knowledge of bioprocess engineering, and then have a real impact on society, um, this type of, of career is, is, is suited to you because there's no doubt that, you know, and I, I remember I used to teach first years, I don't teach them so much now, but I remember I used to get students to write a, a kind of um, a personal statement about why they wanted to study biotech. Um, and I was really surprised that so many people wanted to have a real impact on society. And one way of doing that is, is by working in companies um, where you're actually producing products that are, you know, saving and transforming people's lives. You know, if you, if you look at the new drugs that have come out in the last, you know, 10 years for cancer, diseases like cystic fibrosis, all those sort of things, um, working in this interdisciplinary environment is where you can make a real difference. You know, where sometimes if you stay in your nice little niche of biology um, or even in, in bioprocess engineering, you, you end up kind of worrying about things that are not so important. You know, in, in terms of society, it was really important that we could produce vaccines on a large scale. You know, it would be no good if, if scientists could develop vaccines, but then couldn't produce enough. So, so being able to, to work and have the privilege of work, to be able to work in, in an interdisciplinary environment like that, it um, gives you the potential for a really rewarding career. Um, given the impact, I mean, if you just have to look at our life expectancies nowadays compared to what they used to be, and it's a, a lot of it is down to basic things like uh, sanitary conditions and all that, but there's no doubt that the, the drugs and the, the quality of food we eat, all that kind of thing has had a huge impact. So I suppose to try to make this tangible, what I thought I, and what I tend to do with, with the second year is I talk about a thing called the bioreactor. And the bioreactor is the heart of biotechnology and bioprocessing. It's where the product is actually made. And essentially, I think the next slide might have it. A bioreactor is essentially a very well engineered vessel. And this would be the, the diagram there or the picture there is what would be kind of laboratory scale bioreactors. So they're made of glass. And you notice they've lots of ports sticking out of them and they've a thing called an agitator here. Um, and the, the basic idea here is that they provide a perfectly sterile environment to grow cells. 
Um, and you're wondering, what do you mean by growing cells? Well, it turns out that cells, whether they're microbial cells or yeast cell, or, or bacterial cells, yeast cells, or mammalian cells, and I'll talk about those in a second, um, that cells are a fantastic tool for producing products that chemistry couldn't produce for us. You know, if you look at a lot of the drugs, like even antibiotics nowadays are immunosuppressant drugs or cancer drugs, you just could not make those with, with pure chemistry. But we can make them using cells. And very often what we do to the cells first is we, we genetically engineer them. So one of the, the first uh, genetically engineered products ever on the market was insulin um, for, for diabetics. And it was produced by putting the gene for human insulin into E. coli cells growing them in, in bioreactors. Uh, the cells would, would produce the insulin, um, and then you have a whole series of steps afterwards to, to recover the insulin and to purify it and make sure it's safe for consumption. So just to give you an idea of what these cells look like, so up here on the, on the right, we have E. coli. That's actually E. coli. Um, one of the first organisms to be used in, in genetic engineering. Um, for production of, of uh, biochemicals. This here is a yeast, it's a thing called Cluvromyces marxianus, actually. Um, and one of the things about yeast is that if you get them to produce products, they produce particularly proteins, they produce them in a, I won't go into the technicalities here, but they produce them in a better form than bacteria do. Uh, so people like to use yeast if possible. But, but nowadays, a huge component of biopharma depends on these little guys. Uh, and this is a thing called a Chinese hamster. I, I looked up hamsters the other day to, when I was preparing this, and most of the hamsters we, were used to, the ones you see in pet shops with that lovely kind of golden color, they're actually Syrian hamsters, but this is a, a Chinese hamster. So they're slightly more like a mouse than a, a hamster, but. There are things in biopharma called Chinese hamster ovary cells, CHO cells, CHO, and they're absolutely crucial to the modern biopharma industry. So we have big research groups in DCU where research groups are, are working with, with CHO cells, as they're, as they're called, to optimize them to produce the maximum amount of product. They're, uh, and they're mammalian, so they're from, the ovaries of, of a Chinese hamster. So they're what are called a cell line. They, these cells go back for years and they're modified and genetically engineered and what have you. So a lot of the, Ireland has a huge biopharma presence. You know, we're one of the biggest producers of, of drugs in the world. Um, and a lot of them use Chinese hamster ovary cells. Uh, so they, they grow them up in bioreactors and, they're a little bit more delicate, actually, these kind of cells than, than um, yeast and bacteria. So you have to, your design of, of your bioreactor has to be a little bit different. Um, so, you know, you can already imagine that if you're thinking about a 10,000 litre bioreactor that has these little fellas cells in there, there's biology, but this is a big physical environment, you know, maybe we need to think about the engineering as well. Um, so as you get into larger scales, the bioreactors begin to look like this. Um, and one of the nice things about biopharma companies, if you go out them, they're just absolutely spotless. Um, all our students on the biotech and the bioprocessing program do a work experience, which we call Intra. And it's we, we do quite a long one. It's a nine month one. And our students go out to companies and we get the pleasure of going out to, to visit the students in the companies. And I was down in a company in Cork there uh, just before COVID called Eli Lilly, which are they're a big biopharma company out near Kinsale. And you could eat your dinner off the floor. It's just absolutely spotless environment. And that's, that's a real feature of, of biopharma. Uh, and when you're going into certain labs, you have to put on gowns and hats and, and stuff. Um, so it's actually quite a pleasant environment to work in, I'd say. Um, so that's what the reactors are getting bigger. They're made of stainless steel. But what's really interesting nowadays 
is that I hope you can see that that's that's a bioreactor and it's a bag and this is a really big area of, of biotech and bioprocessing nowadays and it's called single use systems or disposable bioreactors and you know when you've got these big stainless steel bioreactors you use an awful lot of water and, and cleaning agents to, to clean them out from between batches um, and there's been a, quite a push towards using bioreactors that are made of, of their bags, essentially. Um, and there are different types of ones, but that's that's one. And you can see it's got little plastic agitators inside and, and connectors. Um, so there are all sorts of advantages to these, but there are also disadvantages. And in fact, in our the, the challenge-based learning module we're going to do in second year on contemporary issues, one of the themes we're going to have, and I'm going to get in one of my former graduates to, to kind of build up um, some online resources, is this whole area, because it is, is just so important. He, he graduated about eight years ago, and he now has his own single-use systems uh, company. Um, so, so that's what a bioreactor is. It's, it's just a, a, a vessel, and it could be made of stainless steel, it could be made of glass, it could be, made of, it could be a bag, essentially. Um, but it, it is the heart of biotechnology in some sense because that's where your, your product is, is made and that's referred to as upstream process. The rest of the pro process, and which often takes up more of the, the footprint of the plant is what's called downstream process. So it, it's, you know, it, it's one thing to have your product in there with all the other stuff, but you have to get it out, purify it and uh, make sure it, it's safe to, to consume. So in terms of what's important in a bioreactor then, um, obviously, you know, things, the subjects you will study in, in, bio, in biotech or in bioprocessing, you know, you, you start out in first year, you do a general biology course. Now, most of you will have done the Leaving Cert Biology, but some people haven't. So it brings you all up to the same level. And then you, you start specializing because biology is a vast discipline. So you'll do biochemistry, microbiology, cell biology, genetics, um, and you'll also have labs in these subjects as well. So in terms of getting on the road to being able to understand how a bioreactor works, you know, you've, you get a lot of training in, in, in biology and depending on what choices you make, you might do a lot of immunology as well. But alongside with that, if you're doing the, um, the, the, the bioprocessing or the biotech degrees, you do a whole bunch of, of, of engineering modules, like the ones I, I mentioned, fluid flow, heat and mass transfer, membrane separations, all, all kinds of things, instrumentation, process control. And it turns out that in terms of trying to understand how a bioreactor works and or sometimes why it doesn't work at a large scale, you have to bring in all of these ideas that, that fall into the, the realm of, of bioprocess engineering. Because whereas it was a pure biology problem at, at one liter scale, at 10,000 liter scale, it's, it's, there's all sorts of other factors come into play. And it turns out that a lot of the time, one of the key things is this idea of mass transfer. And it's a, that's a subject you've probably he never heard of, and it's, it's something that's kind of unique to chemical and bioprocess engineering. And in a, in a biotech or a bioprocessing context, it really refers to trying to supply the cells with enough oxygen for them to grow and to produce the product that you want them to, to do. And it turns out um, that when you you go through this process that's called scale up. And scale up is a key part of, of developing commercial processes. So over here on the left, you have a small little reactor. The reactors are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It turns out that in going from that small scale to this larger scale, the key thing that will make this big scale, large scale system work is that you get the mass transfer right. So the biology doesn't change, but you have to be able to supply the system with enough oxygen. Um, and there are, you know, it's, it's relatively complicated thing. And actually 
yesterday we, we in the School of Biotech, we did a super talk about this whole issue. Um, that it's actually, and, and this is one of the things I think I love about engineering, it's not all cut and dried as people might think. It's actually, a lot of engineering, particularly bioprocess engineering is quite a creative discipline because you can't solve these problems exactly by sitting down and writing equations or typing on your computer. There's a little bit of an art to it. And, you know, in ensuring that you go from a small scale to a large scale effectively, and you start looking at this problem of supplying enough oxygen. You know, as the speaker was saying yesterday at the talk, we might have all of these nice little rules that we, we say we can apply, but they have to be tweaked. And that's, as I said, that's one of the things that re I really like about engineering as opposed to pure science in that engineering is, is not really a search for truth, which science is, but it, it's a search for a solution that works. You know, and no matter how inelegant or, or how unjustifiable sometimes, if, if it works, isn't that the main thing? So, you know, if you can come up with methods, say, where we say, okay, I need to supply, I need to do something with how I supply oxygen to this bioreactor to make it work as well as that one. Um, well, that's a really interesting problem, actually. And it's one that still requires um, a little bit of art rather than science. <clears throat> and as I said, that's, it's, it's something that people don't normally kind of associate with engineering because it's often seen as, as quite a, a dry discipline, but um, it is very creative, certainly chemical and bioprocessing because they're the most, if you like, molecular of, of the engineering disciplines. They'd be quite different from civil engineering or, or electronic engineering. And, and that's one of the reasons I studied chemical engineering was that I liked science and chemical engineering was that kind of molecular engineering in my view. Um, but, but as I said, the, the, the big attraction for me is that it, it, you can indulge in a certain amount of creativity in, in coming up with solutions to, to problems. And, and the scale of problem is, is still one that hasn't really been solved exactly still requires this kind of state of the pants kind of stuff and, and lots of trial and error and experimentation. <clears throat> so I hope this gives you <clears throat> some sense. I, don't, I didn't want to give you a lecture on mass transfer itself because, you know, it, I, I wouldn't, I don't normally lecture with PowerPoint actually. I, I have this little pad thing and I, I work through things on, on the pad. Uh, it's a little bit more dynamic, but you know, I, I think it's really important when you're, you know, looking at your CAO choices that you understand what biotech and bioprocessing are. They're both interdisciplinary. The bioprocessing is slightly shifted to engineering, but it's more shifted to new kinds of modules, you know, and it, it's more focused on on industry as well. But but they're both fantastic degree programs. I think I'm, I think the bioprocessing degree is, is going to be a super degree really i mean based on the input we've we've had from from graduates and people and, and certainly the sense i get from companies out there is that they really want this to work you know and, and that this degree starts producing graduates fast um that's so in, in terms of sorry the, uh, yeah that's uh greg we might have to finish up now in the next two minutes if that's okay yeah. with you yeah just my last slide actually Great, just, just to, to mention the, the sort of companies you'll work in and as I said, the, the great thing about these is that they're all close to DCU. They're all in North County, Dublin. And all the big players in, um, in, in the, the pharma business and now in the food industry as well um, are, are perfect places for you to work. And in fact, all of these companies up at the top there, if you go into any of them, you know, you just keep bumping into DCU people, you know, so and there, a lot of them are biotech. Uh, no bioprocessing yet, obviously, but also analytical science. So fantastic opportunities, really, there. Um, if you're, you have to be slightly brave to go down this route, I suppose. Um, it's easier to stick in a box, biology or, or whatever, but but um, I think it would certainly pay off for you. Okay, I'll stop that there. Okay. Greg, thanks so much for that. Uh, yeah, I mean, 
both areas, biotechnology and bioprocessing there. I heard somebody saying before that they're a real strength in DCU, but in Ireland in terms of employment opportunities, and you can, you can see there that the number of, you know, the companies that are in locally to DCU, as you said, in mm. all areas. And then when you spoke about having the industry co cooperation, and sure all those DCU, mm. ex-DCU students are there working those companies, they come back and and the whole cycle starts again nearly, you know. Yeah, no, like they're they're incredibly um, helpful, I have to say. Mm. I, I, I don't know whether the people listening will know what LinkedIn is, but I just get onto LinkedIn, put out an SOS yeah. and I get people com coming to me, you know, and they've been hugely generous with their time. And it's it's been really enlightening to, mm. because in, in academia, you can probably get a bit disconnected from the real world possibly. Mm. So it's, it's brilliant to have their, mm. their advice in terms of content and, and the sort of skills that they want students to have. I think that's yeah. really important. And you mentioned also the, the importance of, um, of, of of being good with numbers and you know data, but that's as you said, that's in every company now is looking for people with those yeah, skill sets. There, there's no escaping that. I mean, it's it's you can't make the excuse I'm not good with with mm. with maths or it's not really maths. It's just being numerate and being able yeah. to know your way around spreadsheets because. You know, a lot of students in school will think I'm going to be a scientist, therefore I'll be working in a lab. That's not the case. The vast majority of science mm -hmm. graduates will be working at a computer and a lot mm -hmm. of it will be data analysis, you know, so. Yeah, I, 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 I have a I have a sixth year student upstairs <laughs> and yeah. I said, will you look at this talk, please? Yeah. But I don't know. And But she's loved, she loves biology. And she's probably yeah. typical of a, of a lot of students, as you mentioned. But you know, mm. I'm going to ask her now to make sure she looks at this talk because really, this is the pathway, you know, that she should yeah. be. She well, not should be because it's up to her. Um, but look, take a look at this as well because you know maybe she's just her eyes haven't been opened yet to the whole world. That's yeah, out there. Well, I, I think even if you do a pure biology degree, I mean, our genetics and cell biology degree has a lot of data analytics and and coding. You know, mm. so mm. which people might be surprised to, but but. A lot of modern genetics and things like that, they're huge data sets mm. and uh, you have to be able to handle them. Uh, Absolutely. That whole field of bioinformatics is fascinating, but mm. but it is kind of matsy, you know, so you have to be ready for it. Absolutely. OK, yeah. well, listen, that was really informative. So thank you so much, Greg, for coming in. And okay. uh, sorry about the confusion earlier on. No, no, that was totally my fault. <laughs> So I'm back here at half five. I'm no, like, you're not, Greg. No. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> you're gone for the day. We let you loose. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thanks. So thanks so much, Greg. Okay. So I'll see you. All talk right. to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.